Hello there, YouTube. This is Necrostevo, and I think it's time I do a brief overview of the Alpha Pokemon League, or the APL, which is the newest league that I've joined. If you've been watching my channel for some time, you might recognize the name Indigo League of Legends. This is the league reborn from that league's ashes. So it is a league run. Now it's run by Mini Munch, whom I've battled on my channel before, or Isaiah. And uh, yeah, you can kind of see the team that I ended up with on the screen. For this season two of the Alpha Pokemon League, there are actually 20 combatants over several divisions. So um, the name of the game is getting sniped. So you can see the team I ended up there with. And um, I'm just going to go through the draft order to kind of explain my choices a little bit and explain where I got sniped so you can kind of more understand the Pokemon that I ended up with. Uh, my first draft tier pick was actually Mega Garchomp, which a lot of people will go, why would you spend your first pick on Mega Garchomp? The reason for that is in the Alpha Pokemon League, you do not have to bring the Mega Pokemon, which many of you may have seen in my first week battle. I actually ended up bringing non-Mega Tyranitar. Uh, you don't have to bring the Mega. Even if you do bring the Mega, you don't have to Mega it on the first turn. So because of this draft structure where you have to spend a certain number of points on each Pokemon, some Mega Pokemon are going to be a lot more effective because they have access to their non-Mega forms, such as Garchomp. I could bring Scarf Chomp, or I could bring Yachi. Uh, I could bring Chopel Tyranitar, that type of thing too. Uh, Mega Garchomp is a fantastic round one pick as well. If you have a draft order in mind, like I knew I wanted to pick up Sand later on, after playing him with Cooper's team in the GBA, I really wanted to get a little bit more um, experience with Sand. Uh, without picking something like Hippowdon, that would be relatively passive in Sand. And so, Mega Garchomp, if I get Sand, awesome. If I don't get Sand, he still functions well. So that was my first round pick there. Garchomp is also really nice because he can run mixed or offensive sets. He can go defensive. He can use Fire Blast. He can utilize Hidden Power. He can set up Stealth Rocks. Um, even just the passive ability, Rough Skin forces Pokemon using offensive contact moves to take extra damage. Uh, just a lot of versatility in Garchomp. Plus, I already have a lot of Garchomp bred, which is also very nice. In round two, I ended up picking up Mega Tyranitar, so two Megas back to back, and those were very expensive. Those are both tier one Pokemon, and um, you have to have a Pokemon from every tier, and you also have to have 1,000 uh, points used. Um, so and you had to have 11 Pokemon, so I had to really plan out my draft and have, I had like five backups for everything here. But I got my first two picks, which is perfect. Mega Tyranitar is similar to Mega Garchomp in the versatility department. Uh, decent synergy there where I can bring Tyranitar and bring Mega Garchomp or bring Mega Tyranitar and bring regular Garchomp. That's nice. Uh, lots of offensive options between the both of them as you've already seen me bring Mixed Scarf Tyranitar. Uh, and Tyranitar can run more defensive sets. He also has the ability to trap a lot of Pokemon and a lot of people sleep on his special offensive coverage with Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Fire Blast, uh, Dark Pulse, just several options there. Now, um, headed into round three, you guys know me, I like to pick up my fairy fairly early on. A fairy early fairy, if you will. Um, and that's just because fairies are fantastic in draft format similar to bulky water types. They just function very well. I ended up picking Florges in my third slot because I wanted to go ahead and get my Fairy Dragon Steel Core going. And uh, if you let fairies sit around for too long, you just don't get a fairy for the season. So third round, I decided to go with Florges. Uh, I've used Florges before, so once again, it's nice to have sort of Pokemon already bred for that Pokemon. But with Florges, it's not a passive fairy. It has the ability to utilize Calm Mind to set up decent special attack stat. Uh, it can also, as many fairies, function as a cleric with aromatherapy, and uh, it can pass fairly nice wishes around the team, too. Um, you guys may have remembered when I used a Florges back in the Pokemon Premier League. And I actually ended up sweeping a couple of teams and even KOing a Metagross with uh, Florges. So it can definitely do some work. And the next round, this is when the sniping begins. So I originally wanted Delmize, 
great synergy with Mega Tyranitar being able to rapid spin and avoid the fighting type attacks. But Delmize was grafted by Gengar Raichu one turn before me. And so I went ahead and got my second uh, pick for my grass type, which was Serena. Which uh, Serena, I think, is very underrated in draft format. Uh, not only its ability, Queenly Majesty, allowing it to dodge priority moves. Well, not dodge them. They're just ineffective against it. Um, but also, it's another Pokemon that can form a defensive role without being passive. I really hate passive bulky teams that's just not my play style uh serena also gets u-turn which is nice another cleric pokemon with aromatherapy uh high jump kick is sadly going to be one of the few fighting offensive moves i get on this team because i never actually pick up a good fighting type and um trop kick is just a nice tech move where if something tries to switch it on a resisted hit it loses attack power and that just makes things a little bit easier to work around um, Serena is a little bit unfortunate in the speed department and its overall HP is lower. So that means things like Assault Vest probably aren't as uh, useful with it. But another rapid spinner with the team that I'm going to end up drafting makes a lot of sense. Now, um, after Serena, uh, again, Fire, Water, Grass Core, Fairy Dragon, Steel Core. I was looking at water types and then I realized, oh yeah, my number one pick for water types, Araquanid, is still on the table. So Araquanid was my round five pick, uh, and I am really, really excited to use Araquanid. That is another Pokemon that I think is very much slept on in draft league play, and just competitive play in general. Uh, with draft leagues, you really need to have a Pokemon that can take Scalds, and just having a bulky water type generally is a good thing because of the way that people tend to draft their teams. A bulky water type can come in on a variety of threats and either threaten something out or at least use its own Scald move. Araquanid can function in both of those roles. Uh, furthermore, with Water Bubble, it becomes a bit of an offensive powerhouse, uh, being able to drop Pokemon that don't outright resist it with Water Bubble and uh, boosting items such as Choice Band or Mystic Water. You can put some serious damage on things and by repeatedly spamming liquidation, you can even lower, lower their defense as we saw in my week one battle, uh, where things that otherwise will be checks are no longer checks. Uh, Araquanid is very slow and it also cannot take physical hits very well at all. So it does require a little bit of team support, but if your opponent's team doesn't have a good water type switch in, and even if, it, if they do, it doesn't necessarily matter with things like Serena and Magneton around, because um, you can trap those things that would resist it, such as like a Ferrothorn or something like that, uh, then they're going to be hurting a lot. Um, a couple of weird tools are rack when he gets our Mirror Coat, which is nice because he has fantastic special defense. Um, and then on top of that, a rack when he gets moves like Lunge and Leech Life, enabling it to keep its HP a little bit higher or, once again, lower your opponent's attack. Uh, in round six, unfortunately, I got sniped once again. Um, I'm sorry, not in round six. Round six, I went ahead and picked up Magneton because I did want to complete that Fairy Dragon Steel Core. Uh, and plus, Magneton is faster than Magnezone, even though it doesn't hit as hard. I just like the speed. It makes it a little bit more reliable in my eyes. Plus, you can run Eviolite on it if you need extra bulk and you don't need the speed. Uh, so I like that a lot. Plus, I already have a lot of Magneton bread, so that is very nice. Um, I actually have several Magneton with different hidden powers bread, so that makes that even easier. Um, Magneton's ability, Magnet Pull, speaks for itself and being able to trap the myriad steel types that I'm sure to face. And then on top of that, if I don't need Magnet Pull, I can run Analytic and get a 30% power boost on any time that I'm using Magneton after my opponent or when they swap out. Just having that extra power is really nice. Uh, I could have drafted Magnezone, but remember, I am I have a finite amount of points here, and Magnezone was a higher tier choice than Magneton. So by choosing Magneton, it allows me to pick up that electric type as well without using up too many of my points. Now, in the next slot for number seven, I originally wanted a Lycanroc Day Form. And that got sniped the turn the round before because I was doing really, really well and not getting sniped. Uh, so I guess that's a little bit of a shout out to Diglett Dreams there for sniping that one. But we have backups in that same turn. I was like, cool, I will get Sand Slash. That will give me a, another Sand Rush option, another Rapid Spinner, 
uh, Sand Slash also gets nice access to things like Knock Off, whereas like in Rock Data is not. And um, Sand Slash defensively sometimes makes sense if they don't have a good offensive presence to push through Sand Slash. Super Fang, Toxic, Knock Off, uh, that can be annoying to break through. So Sand Slash, of course, can set up with Swords Dance and do some real damage as well in the Sandstorm. So that is fantastic. Uh, the turn after that, I actually ended up drafting Arcanine, and Arcanine is actually gonna end up being my Z-Move user for this league. Arcanine has a plethora of coverage moves which make him very effective. He can go special, mixed, or physically offensive. Um, some of the Z-Move options include Iron Tail, Close Combat, uh, Solar Beam, which turns into Bloom Doom, of course. Um, he even gets Crunch. Uh, uh, special offensive options there, Fire Blast or Hidden Power. Um, just a lot of different options. He also gives me priority with extreme speed. And then I can soften things up again on the physical side with Intimidate or Will-O-Wisp. Both very viable options indeed, as we saw once again in our week one battle. So I'm really excited to use Arcanine. I actually don't have that many of him bred because I didn't really use him that often. But his place on the team made a little bit more sense just because of his speed tier. I was a little bit on the slower side, so we're going to get a little bit more on the above average speed tier as well with Arcanine. The uh, next round pick was a little bit of an odd one for me because I was kind of getting close to it. It's like, okay, there's, there's several things that I want. I need to start making sure I get those because I, I was kind of running out of backups at this point with so many people drafting Pokemon. I originally wanted Star Raptor in this slot, but that was drafted right before me once again. So my backup pick was Dodrio, which I was very happy to choose because remember Dodrio gets a 10 base point speed boost in generation six or seven, excuse me. So with that boost, that actually makes it faster than Star Raptor, and it gets access to Jump Kick now. On top of that, it gets Swords Dance, it gets Quick Attack, you can run Bandit sets, you can run Scor Choice Scarf sets, or just a regular Life Orb. Uh, early Bird, if I have to have something put to sleep, maybe Dodrio will be waking up a little bit sooner. Um, if I need to run away from battle, Dodrio would be the choice, but we don't run away, so I don't have to worry about that. But uh, yeah, just, generally spamming powerful attacks. Dodrio's a little bit faster rather than Star Raptor, and he gives me that nice flying type. So now I have my flying ground electric core that I like to draft when I can as well. So uh, Dodrio was a little bit of an interesting pick because I didn't have that many of it either, but we will remedy that very soon. I'm actually very interested to see how Dodrio performs this season because I can't think of a time when I faced Dodrio in draft league format, even just planning for it let alone actually battling against it. So I don't think it'll be something that a lot of draft players have experience against. So that's the perfect opportunity for me to bring it. The only downside is that something like Star Raptor would have had access to U-Turn and Dodrio does not, uh, but we can work around that for sure. Up next, we have Kabutops as our round 10 pick after Dodrio. Kabutops um, was a little bit of an odd pick for me. He is one of my favorite Pokemon in the entire game like top three easily. It goes Venusaur, Kabutops. No, Venusaur, Zapdos, Kabutops. Usually they're in that order. Sometimes they swap around. But Kabutops was odd because I was like, I needed another Pokemon, but it had to be from tier three. And there were only so many things in there that made sense with my team. Uh, Kabutops being the best of them. Uh, Kabutops does give my team a nice offensive water type. His speed is, is is kind of in that mediocre range, but uh, he does give me another stone edge user, I guess, kind of like Garchomp. I don't get that access to edge quake, unfortunately. But Kabutops does get priority, which is nice. And um, in the rain, Kabutops could be very viable. So by choosing Kabutops, I knew in my final choice, I wanted to have Lipar, because Lipar would not only be able to set up the rain with Prankster, uh, it also would be able to have a variety of other roles like copycat and cool things, but Lipar got sniped. And so I was going to choose Meowstic, but Meowstic got sniped. And so then I decided on Illumise. And we decided on Illumise because Illumise is cuter than Volbeat. That was literally my reason for not choosing Volbeat. Volbeat is a little bit better if you want to use like a, um, U-turn, I guess, 
But Illumise I like because Tinted Lens is a more useful secondary ability than what Volby would otherwise have. Also, Illumise can threaten somewhat in the offensive capability of uh, Tail Glow. And while Baton Pass is banned, I can use Tail Glow, Tinted Lens, Bug Buzz, and mess some things up. But yeah, Illumise gets access to Prankster Rain Dance, which helps out Kabutops. Also Prankster uh, with Charm or Thunder Wave. It can also utilize Roost, which is really, really nice to restore its HP on a more defensive set. Um, and if I want to be that guy, I have access to Confuse Ray. That just sounds really annoying. Confuse Ray and, and Thunder Wave on a set. Oh man. Not not fun, but it's very it's a little it's a cute Pokemon. It looks like a little flapper girl, uh, and I can't wear that style, so why not let Elamis pull it off? So guys, that's the team. I didn't want to spend too long on a team breakdown, but I did want you to know what I was utilizing for this league. And uh, if you have any questions or if you have any Pokemon you'd like to see me pick up that what you think would fit better, feel free to leave those down in the description. And I'll be looking at those comments when I have an opportunity. But thank you so much for your time. And I do hope you stick around for the battles in the Alpha Pokemon League Season 2. Uh, if I didn't mention it before, this is actually a money league. So um, if I win, there's cash. Cash is good. Right? That's why we that's why we play these games. No, no, that's why we that's why we go to work so we can make the money so we can play the games. I guess. I guess you could play on a simulator. But anyways, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.